Hello everyone and welcome back to Technically Unsure, where I'm not really sure what I'm doing technically. What am I doing? What am I doing? So today in this video, we are going to take a look at a computer that the company sent it to me. No control over the content of this video. If there is something not working, it's gonna stay in the video. So that being said, if everything works in this computer that we are going to take a look at, I believe one of the strongest points for this is the price. Because we have looked at other similar commercial NAS products in this channel and was using Intel N100. This one comes with Intel N305 and basically eight core, eight threads and the clock speed boost can go up to 3.8 gigahertz, right? It's just a small computer. Let me show you actually what I'm talking about. This is the package I got, nothing else in terms of branding and it says mini PC right here. Okay, that's all there is. This thing is $250 and it comes with the power adapter. It accepts 100 to 240 volt and it's 12 volt, five amp. It comes with this with a USB connector and then it comes with a SATA cable so it's the SATA connection over here both connections power and data turns it into this very very small connector and uh, there are a bunch of screws in here I didn't know it's gonna involve some assembly I thought it is uh, out of box everything will work but it doesn't matter and if we continue opening it up you will see ta-da we are going to get this and in terms of IO as you can see two full-size HD HDMI, a power button, two USB 3.2, and two Ethernet gigabit, I believe, and a DC power adapter. In order to take this out, I guess we have to figure it out. Okay, that side came out. So this is the fan that's underneath. Let me see. Oh man, that was it. Okay, so it's magnetic. Okay, you just have to push a little bit harder. So I believe they shipped one with the SSD and I think this is the smallest option. I think 128 gigabyte. We have one, two, three, four NVMe SSD slots, which I'm gonna populate all four. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna open it up. Okay, so I took it out. You can see that the connection from this pins goes to this and this is an M.2 SSD slot. So I believe it is just using a single PCIe slot and we are just connecting all four to a single one on here. And it comes with an RTC battery and also a RAM. Let me see what is the RAM. Okay, so this is a DDR5 Sodium 8 gigabyte 5600. So this is it, it's like palm of your hand you can literally it's nothing it's a uh, weight wise i'm gonna say it's like 150 200 grams 150 grams then maybe not more than that and there's a speaker beeper whatever in there i see front usb panel connection over there front usb panel one two com port stuff over there okay so this is the power button all right we saw it and this is a powerful big one big uh, heat sink with a fan this is it so i can put it this way actually so hold on a second so why did they ship this okay I'm I'm just gonna guess to cool off the NVMe SSDs okay so they are expecting you to put this in there right they were expecting you to kind of like put it somewhere in here i assume and then plug this into the usb port okay so i don't think i'm gonna need it i'm just gonna put this on top of it i mean in the underneath we're gonna work on it this way so i think this should be enough all right let me grab nvme ssds all right i found one two three four one terabyte nvme ssds and three of them are the 980 pro and this one is not 980 pro oh yeah it's a samsung nvme ssd and my question is where do we connect this the ssd connection i think sorry not this it's this it's this okay i see it it is underneath here so i'm gonna take this off again so yeah sata 1 and sata 2 so i'm just going to use one of the two ports which is here easy to install and uh, one cable gives you the both data and the power all right so let's put this back on yeah let's go into fast forward so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use this as a heat sink. Not gonna screw it, put it like this, okay? So the fan is actually blowing. Actually, in terms of dimension, so it is actually nine centimeters by nine and a half. 
and the height with everything without the case actually is like five centimeters and let me grab an ssd and the power cable i will be right back okay so that's the power consumption and i connected the sata disk i placed an ubuntu boot install image and now we are going to power it on i see something on the screen oh there you go so we are in and as you can see it's uh, 8 gigabyte ram 4800 megahertz speed and uh, alder lake ulx and cw adl and tbx anyway so that's the bios so there is connectivity wi-fi settings and everything in here cpu core stuff intel i3 and 305 as you can see here and these are the settings for virtualization is enabled by default awx avx and other stuff cpu smm enhancements they are enabled this is nice power and performance cpu is in on the turbo c states is enabled by the way there are settings here for tdp and other stuff thunderbolt trusted computing so you can install windows 11 hopefully acpi it hardware monitor the temperatures are there usb config network stack and all that stuff ram disk configuration okay you can create a ram disk apparently here and two intel oh i'm sorry it's not gigabit it is 2.5 gigabit each so what they say they recommend installing true nas to turn it into a full-blown nas right so if once i do install true nas not if i will install true nas and then i will try the link aggregation i want to do, use both of them okay so you know what let me try actually does it boot into windows i just want to see yeah there you go technically i'm sure it's booting into windows 11 oh there you go it already booted into it so why not just uh, take a look at it, everything around here yeah let's go into fast forward mode i'm just going to do a bunch of benchmarks and then uh, we take it from there okay so we are in the windows but unfortunately none of these tests are working i just want to show you that the ethernet is detected and everything is uh, like cpu ram disk and the ethernet is working so network connections as you can see i installed the driver and it is showing that the speed is 2.5 now let's put into ubuntu and take it from there so we are booted into Ubuntu and if I do a NeoFetch you will see that this is the Intel i3 device and uh, obviously it's going to be able to play any video 4K or anything without any installing any driver okay. As you see it is a 4K resolution with 200% uh, scaling but yeah obviously it's not dropping any frame. So let me do a Stress NG. Okay, so Stress NG is done and we are getting 30,000. For reference, Raspberry Pi 5 is 800, 900. And if we do an iPerf 3, obviously it's going to be 2.5 gigabit and it's exactly correct and by the way you see it goes to 15 watts when you're doing like iperf and then when i was doing stress ng it went up to 30 watts so this is when it's like a max power by the way fan also spins up very fast when you're using it all and it goes to 30 watts so suspension not needed but i'm just gonna do it anyway as you can see 32 watts here's the temperatures no problem in the temperatures some cores are actually hot yeah, it went up to 80 but it's coming down and in terms of disks yep one two three four four nvme ssd and one eight terabyte ssd every single one of them is detected so i am going to clear these okay dev sda and uh let's try the sata one okay let's do hd parm on it's this eight terabyte one. Now let's do NVMe SSD ones. So I'm gonna say that's a little bit slow. And yeah, if we do the second one. Okay, so that's better. Maybe that was one of the slow ones. Let's do the other one. Okay, that's better. Okay, now it's working. So as you remember, one of the NVMe SSDs were not the 980 Pro. So it could be that one is the slow one. The other two are doing fine. That's kind of okay. That's 700 megabytes per second it is acceptable. So the other thing that I wanted to test, let's install flash ROM and let's see if we can clear the Intel ME from this. Uh, it's gonna require those stuff that I don't want to go there. So you can't do it with flash ROM, you can't read the BIOS. Now, what I wanted to do is actually the intended purpose. Actually, you can use it for a lot of things. You can install Windows and carry it around with a lot of storage. You can install Ubuntu or Proxmox and have Docker images or VMs with Plex and Jellyfin and other stuff and have it on the go. It is very powerful, very versatile. You can do a lot of things with this, but they are saying official recommendation for the NAS storage is to 
TrueNAS. So let me install TrueNAS and then we get back and then continue, okay? Okay, as you can see, we booted. That's the IP address, 192.168.75.157. And this is the TrueNAS, okay? So we are logged in. We see the eight gigabyte RAM. We see eight threads, eight cores, i3 and 305, and 2.5 gigabit ethernet. So what I'm gonna do is let's create a pool and I unfortunately had to install the OS in one of the NVMe SSDs. It didn't work with this SSD. So we have to just a little bit mix and match, which is not really ideal. Not sure what I can do. So I just want to test the performance and speed, right? So for that storage, I will leave it up to you, whatever you want to try. So for that, I'm going to do a dual, just do one, create another VDEV. Okay, so two VDEVs, each one gigabyte, and force it. And we can use the other one for cache. And uh, let's create a pool with two VDEVs. And there you go. So we created two VDEVs, and each is one terabyte. Let's create a data set, let's say data, and everything generic is fine. Before that, let's create a user, regular user, not the one that I'm using here for admin. Uh, let's call that unsure, unsure, and unsure, and unsure. And let's go to dual data. Let's do there, full access there doesn't matter and if we go to sharing windows smb create a share and go to the same path here that's the options no guest access that's all okay and then we configure the enable the smb it's enabled configure the acl custom and we are going to add an acl item so create these are unsure basic is fine modify full control Save. So we created a share. Now, actually, let's test that. 192, 168, 75, 157. Unsure. Okay, we are in. All right, so that's the storage. Okay, so I have this file that is a 10 gigabyte. I am going to copy that to this share. And yes, we are capping the 2.5 gigabit ethernet speeds. My computer that I'm recording from, that I'm copying from is 2.5 gigabit ethernet. And that one is 2.5 gigabit ethernet. So we have already done the iPerf test. We know ethernet is not the problem. And as you can see in TrueNAS, just killing it, right? That is working perfectly. And installation was very smooth. So now as promised, let me try the link aggregation, okay? I wanna go check my switch and make sure the aggregation is enabled on these two. I will be right back. Okay, so we are back. Let me show you what I did. Link aggregation, like zero, two interfaces. If you click on interface, IGC zero and one. If you go to network summary and interfaces, you will see. Don't see it here because I did it from shell. Doesn't matter. This is a different IP, okay? And uh, if we do uh, another test, 172.16.1156, Okay, and then this is the 21, the file. Okay, now if I copy that again over here, so you will see that it is capping the 2.5 gigabit ethernet, but my computer itself is 2.5 gigabit ethernet max. Also, I wanna try something. I remember, I think TrueNAS comes with iPerf3 already installed. Let's go to shell. So iPerf3, 50, bidirectional, 172.61.1. You see that? Five gigabits per second, okay? So link aggregation is working and that's 33 watts. We are using all ports, okay? Now let's go to other computer and copy a file with a five gigabit ethernet speed. Let's go there. Okay, as you can see now, we started and this is the same 172.16.1156 and this is the file that we copied. Now I have a 20 gigabyte file that I am going to copy to this computer and here is the speed, let's watch. So the speed you're getting the max is 2.5 so that's i just wanted to show you and at least we tried the 2.5 gigabit with two link aggregation okay that's good enough test for now okay so as you saw in the other computer it is still the copy is 2.5 gigabit ethernet cap those speeds but as you see in the iperf test we have 4.7 so it could be that the link aggregation is not really the scaling the copy over the smb connection it's not copying that much faster doesn't matter but we have the 4.7 
7 gigabit here for the iPerf test. So in summary, Windows 11 installed and worked without any problems. NVMe SSDs are all detected. Power consumption goes up to 33 watts. We tested suspension stress NG. We installed TrueNAS. Everything is working. Every single port is tested, HDMI included. And it is a very, very powerful computer, to be honest. For 250 bucks, keep that in mind. And it comes with a fancy case. I know I took everything out, but it comes with a case and a fan and everything, okay? So I think this is a very great deal. I couldn't get the ME cleaned up. There is an ME in there in the BIOS, but other than that, uh, everything seems to be in order. Right before I go, I just wanna show you one more thing I did. I don't know if it is intended to a purpose, intended way of using it, but I moved the cable for the SATA connection through that little hole in the side. So you can put four NVMe SSD here, put this cable over here. So you keep the SATA connection at this cable in the case and then you close it like this, okay? And uh, you will be able to use the computer just like this, okay? If you don't wanna use the SATA cable at all, obviously you can remove that, but I wanna keep it inside the case so I know it is for this one. So yeah, this is what I did. I just wanted to show you guys this one as well. All right, thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye for now.